How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. It's warm in here in my office. I didn't expect it to get that warm. I left the blinds open and the sun shined in here all day. Oh, okay. So I had to turn the fan on and now my papers are flapping up. So I'm trying to like put things on them to keep them from flying off while we're talking. Just paper floating by. <laughs> put my uh, on. Is it warm there today? It is. It's it's in the 70s. It's not as warm as it has been, but it's but it's really nice and sunny. So that's good. I think we're supposed to get another cool front and more rain in the next two days. Uh, yeah, it was cool here today, so I'm a little jealous of the warmer weather. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I think, sorry, go ahead. There's a bit of I a think, delay. I think, I, I think I'm ready for warm weather until I'm out in it and it's really hot. <laughs> uh, so for those people that are joining us, um, Carol from Carol Fladdick, am I saying that right? The H is for silent. Fladdick. Fladdick. Mm -hmm. Right, Latic Designs, and she's joining us tonight to talk about her absolutely gorgeous um, blanket dress designs. So, um, thanks for joining me, Carol. And uh, did you want to introduce yourself about a, a little bit about how you got started and everything? Well, it's an interesting story. It's um, you know they say things happen on accident, yeah. and so it definitely was an ac a happy accident. Um, <laughs> I had to have foot surgery that required a really long recovery time. And I was stuck on the couch for five months. Oh, and wow. crochet was the only thing that kept me sane. Yeah, this this whole quarantine thing isn't a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> You're like amateurs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh you guys, you got it, you got it easy. At least you can still walk. Um, <laughs> but I was crocheting orders like crazy. It was during the mermaid tail blanket um, craze. Okay. And um, of course, with a great big, huge cast on my foot, I couldn't wear a mermaid tail blanket. So I was trying to find something that I could use besides just your traditional blanket. And they were advertising the Beauty and the Beast movie that was coming out. And Beauty and the Beast has always been my favorite. So I decided to make a blanket that looked like a bell dress. I had no idea what would happen. I didn't know if people would like it. I'd never written um, a big pattern before. I'd done like some boot cuffs and a sweater and that was it. But I thought, well, I'll try. And I shared it on one of the Facebook groups and it went crazy. So <laughs> I had requests for a ton more and I'm still trying to fill them. <laughs> and it's been three years and I'm still okay. trying to fill them. Just people want more and more and more. So. Well, they are gorgeous. And well, I think Beauty of the Beast is my favorite. So I obviously love that one. <laughs> it it's is a my top seller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the first one and been the top seller ever since. And you were on TV with your blankets, right? Or your blankets at least on TV? Well, my blankets were on TV, yes. Um, it was the first week of the Pickler and Ben show, and we were supposed to Skype, but the Skype was down. So I didn't get to be on the show, but my blankets were on the show. So that was very cool. And they shipped them back to me. And the uh, Sleeping Beauty one that Kelly Pickler war I thought about keeping it I was like man I could probably auction this on eBay or something but I ended up selling it so. okay so do you um so how many different blanket designs like the princess type blanket designs have you made so far I have um I think 17 different princesses oh, and then wow. I have superheroes and villains and then a few other blankets that are outside those categories. And I've got um, hopefully four more coming this year. Hopefully. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're always so fast. <laughs> my brain never stops. It's just <laughs> continuous. So, yeah. And so how did you learn to crochet? How did I learn? My yeah. mom taught me when I was in grade school. Mm -hmm. um, I was probably about eight years old, so a long time ago, 
and I did like granny square blankets for the longest time. That's all I did. And then when I learned how to do some other stitches and designs, I just did baby blankets. That's all I ever did. And when my nephew and niece, the youngest ones, were born, I decided to try and make hats and toys and stuff for them. And then it just grew from there. So um, now all my other crafts sit in my basement and all I do is crochet. <laughs> Well, now you knit too, right? Because I've seen you made that yeah. gorgeous coral knit. I still, I'm not sure I still don't consider myself a knitter because I'm <laughs> still so slow and so new. But yeah, I guess if I did a top, I have to consider myself a knitter. Yeah. So yeah, I'm working on my second top that I'm testing for the same lady and um, going very slowly. So the yarn is very slick and I'm struggling with it a little bit, but hopefully it'll turn out well and I'll be able to wear it. Yeah, you're using the true, uh, true boo, right? True boo. One? I think that's how you say it. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. slick. Um, so what outside of the blankets, what would you say is the favorite thing that you've ever designed? Favorite thing for me? Yeah, my favorite. personal favorite thing. Um, that's a tough one. Probably my cardigan, just because I love a big cardigan, comfy cardigan. Um, so that would probably be my favorite. And it was the first thing that I really designed. Um, but I really like all the fun pillows and Christmas stuff too, because who doesn't like snowmen and Christmas? So yeah, special about the crocheting something for Christmas. I don't know what it is, but I love the Christmas stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. It's like all year long, you're like, oh, this is so cute. And then you get to Christmas and you're like, oh, gotta make all the Christmas stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly it's like, especially for, I don't know if it's you, but I do this every year I'm like oh I gotta make this for Christmas and I have this big Pinterest board of all this Christmas stuff I want to make or I also have a notebook with ideas I write down for Christmas and the next thing I know it's like two weeks into Christmas I'm like I have to make this all I haven't started any of it yet and it's like this mad dash in the last two weeks of the month to get it all done <laughs> I'm trying to start doing like Christmas gifts now and get them like stocked up so that come Christmas time I won't be so crazy because yeah you get orders at Christmas time and then you've got things you need to make for gifts and it just becomes and then I want to design so yeah, yeah it becomes overwhelming a little bit at Christmas yeah definitely I found uh, the first Christmas I'd ever done um, the finished orders or finished products for people I just mm -hmm. started and I was trying to do that at the same time but I was really like inspired by designing and I wanted to just design all the time but I'm like ah, I gotta finish all these products so it was just hard to juggle doing that all at the same time right you didn't make yourself do things that necessarily you might not want to do at that time <laughs> yes yes and I have a hard time with um, when somebody asks me to make something, I'm like, do I have to follow the pattern or can I put my own twist on it? Because yeah. I just, I like to design so much that I kind of just want to do my own thing. But if they want me to follow the pattern, I'll follow the pattern. Yeah, I do that too. I uh, have a few clients that just like, they'll show me a picture of something they want. They're like, I know you're going to do something good. Just, just whatever you want to do, as long as this is kind of the idea I'm looking for. I'm like, perfect <laughs> yeah I have a few of those yeah and then so um you've been doing this for how long now I sorry you said I think 2016 started? um I started designing in December of 2016 yeah so a little over three years it's been a wild ride yeah it's been fun. <laughs> But it's, it's awesome that you like had such a big success, like right at the beginning with the blankets and that you're able to come up with so many different ideas for the blankets as well. Right. Because I really yeah. like, yeah. I'm trying to remember which one you had a superhero that I really liked and my son just went crazy for it. Was it Superman? Did you do like Probably. a superhero? I think yeah. it was that one. 
my my son I remember scrolling and him like jumping over me going it's Superman <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah, I've got requests for more boy ones people are like there's not enough boy options so I'm working on some boy designs so that's good as somebody who has a son, I feel like there's not many just um, boy designs in general, like even just beyond the blankets. I mean, right. and sometimes I try to think when I'm designing something, I'm like, do I really have to put a bow on it this time or make a dress <laughs> for it? You know, can it maybe, you know, be a little different this time? Because my son's always like, oh, well, you make everything for Abby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want to put ribbons and bows and frills and... Yeah. yeah, definitely. Uh, so, shoot, I had another question for you, and I kept thinking about it in the back of my head. I'm like, okay, don't forget to ask. Don't forget to ask. Um, <laughs> do you have like a, a yarn preference that you like to design with with your with your blankets, or um, is it just kind of whatever fits the design, or do you have a set that's like I always go back to this kind of yarn? I, I have used Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn on almost all of them um, because it's close. They have a lot of colors and it's soft. And that's one of the things that I, I can't use yarn that's scratchy. Like I, I used to use Red Heart, just plain Red Heart yarn when I first started crocheting. And I think that's why I never really put the time and effort into it because it hurt my hands. And I was like, well, this isn't any fun. So it has <laughs> to be soft. Um, but I did just order some Brava and I'm working with that and I'm loving that. So I'm going to be using that for my next few designs and, um, they have a lot of colors, so I should be able to, to do quite a bit in that. I think Hobby Lobby probably still has more, but I'm going to try and use the Brava when I can. Yeah, I really like the Brava. I've been uh, using it for some Amigurumi designs lately. It's really, really nice. Yeah, I just got my, my first order in today, and I was using it. I'm working on a baby blanket, and it, it works really nice. I like it. Yeah. Still jealous of the Hobby Lobby yarn, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, I took the two skeins out to my husband, and I said, so what do you think softness-wise? And he said, I think the Hobby Lobby might be a little bit softer. I said, yeah, but I think the Brava might wash a little better. That's oh, my okay. hope. So we'll see. I got to test it out. Yeah, for sure. Especially if you're making like blankets for kids, like you definitely need that washability. Because yes. right? I've been, yes. when I first started, I got burnt by that hard a few times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm and I, I, I usually lay them out to dry. I don't put them in the dryer because I don't want them to get all fuzzy. And the yeah. Brava says you can dry it. So I'm going to test it. I'm going to make something small and wash it and see how it does. All right. Awesome. Let me know how that goes. I will. Um, did you want to play our game now? Oh, I'd love to. All right, perfect. So for those of you that are watching, Carol and I have discussed that we're going to be playing What Would You Rather? And feel free to answer along with us um, because we'd love to hear your answers as well. And so we're playing What Would You Rather? Crochet Edition or Fiber Edition because there are some like knit related questions in there because I know Carol knits. So All right. uh, I, I'll just say, what would you rather for the first one? And for the rest, I'll just ask the actual question without the, what would you rather to save okay. time? So Sounds good. what would you rather crochet or knit? Crochet. <laughs> would you I rather a lot faster? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right. Uh, would you rather a quick and easy pattern or a longer pattern that teaches you something new? That's a tough one. I usually try and have one of each because I get impatient. So if I had to choose one, I would probably say a quick one just so I could do more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting For me, it's all about how much I can get done. <laughs> right. It's about the accomplishment. Have you been counting how many projects you've completed since quarantine started? No, I haven't even thought about that, but I should have. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to have to count how many I've done because I'm like, I've done quite a few baby blankets, but they've been the bulky ones. So those go a little faster, but I'm, I'm going to have to count how many I've gotten done. 
I saw this post on um, the Reddit crochet forum the other day. And this mm -hmm. wo uh, woman had posted, it said my quarantine diary. And she had uh, like this uh, enormous pile of projects laid out on her bed. There must have been, I don't know, just by memory, at least 70 projects, at least. And like there were wow. blankets, amigurumi, hats. So there was like a little bit of everything. It was really impressive. I was like, wow. It's like, wow. I haven't showed it to my husband. And he, I mean, he doesn't care. But I was just like, look at all this. This is crazy. And so like, think of all she could have been doing and cooking meals. And <laughs> my husband's like, wow, she's got a lot of time. I'm like, right. I want that. <laughs> yeah. Really cool. Um, would you rather crochet a king size blanket or a smaller blanket using only black yarn? A smaller blanket. <laughs> I don't normally mind black yarn, but it probably depends on the hook size. If it's a fairly small hook, I'd much rather do a small. If it's a larger hook, I'm okay with doing a larger project, but I'd probably still like the smaller one. Yeah. Do you like uh, to work with black yarn? I actually don't mind it that it has to be the right light um, because I have um, issues with depth perception is really important. Like I have to have exact lighting or it just won't work for me. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't mind it, but as long as I've got like the proper lighting, then it's fine. Yeah. I was I'm actually remembering the last thing I made with black that I had trouble seeing the stitches and I think it was a really small hook and I was yeah. just like, I can't see. Yeah, I tried um, doing micro crochet with black thread. And I was just like, I was like, why am I doing this for my first project with black? It's like, this doesn't seem smart for me. <laughs> um, I eventually got it. But like my very first, I was just like, okay, maybe this is a bit ambitious. Maybe I should try with the yellow first, get a hang for it, and then jump in with the black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so. My goodness. All right. I couldn't read my own writing there. Have you, would you rather have to hide your heart, your yarn from your partner forever or share your stash with them forever? Share my stash. <laughs> I don't think I could hide it. <laughs> I love it. Kind of Thank you. I wish my trying was to keep organized. I'm trying. I keep having to read reorganize it as I take stuff out because I don't like empty spots. <laughs> so I keep moving it around so that there's stuff everywhere. So it looks good. And looks like a, a couple yeah. of people are they're answering the share. They're saying share. Yeah. There. That's about half of it. <laughs> that looks awesome. Uh, so our next question is uh, would you rather crochet? This is a kind of crazy one my husband came up with and insisted I use. Would you rather crochet while getting your teeth done at the dentist or while having your legs waxed? <laughs> I hate the dentist. Like, seriously hate the dentist. It would probably keep my mind off of it, but I'm going to go with legs waxed. Of course, I've never had my legs waxed, so I might change my mind if I did. <laughs> but I have yeah, anxiety I I, with the dentist. I think I would do the uh, legs wax, too, only because it would probably be easier to see. But yeah, I get anxiety right. at the dentist. So. <laughs> yeah. But when your head's back, and that'd be hard. Yeah. <laughs> no, Knowing my dentist, he'd probably be like, could you stop moving your arms? <laughs> yeah. And legs uh, wax I don't think you could see your work during a dental cleaning. Yeah, you'd have to feel for the stitches. Yeah. Um, would you rather watch a YouTube tutorial or read a written or photo tutorial? YouTube. Which is funny because YouTube didn't exist back when I learned. Yeah. Um it just seems to be so much easier. I I'm very visual, so I like the videos. And if I if I turn it on and I don't like the angle or something, I'll go look for another one. Yeah. Well, that's the beauty of YouTube as well as right, because there's so many different styles. And so if you don't, 
necessarily enjoy somebody's teaching style or the way they're going too fast or whatever. Like there's probably 10 other people at least that you can go and check out and see if that person, you know, matches the style that you learn best with. Right. And I think that's great. Well, and uh, what's funny if I say that, but I don't do YouTube and all mine are written. So I really need to get on YouTube. <laughs> See, when I first learned, I, I really preferred like the photo tutorials because I would get so impatient with trying to focus on seeing the stitches and then hearing the person talk. And so I was just like, I would get very overwhelmed and I'm just like, no, I can't do this. This is too much. But now that, you know, I, I've got, you know, some knowledge, I'm, I'm much more comfortable watching the video and be like, okay, I'll skip ahead. I'll skip ahead. But back yeah. in the day, I was like, nope, it has to be like step-by-step -step photos or it's just, I can't do it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I think with, with knitting, I, I haven't tried like photo or written. I've just done the videos. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not even sure if I would understand a written. I don't know. I haven't tried. Yeah, I'm going to have... Okay. I haven't mentioned to you yet, but I actually bought a, a pair of uh, chunkier needles to see how much I remember from for knitting. And I'm probably just going to go straight to the videos <laughs> if I can't remember too much because it's just, uh, I think for knitting specifically, it might be harder with the pictures. Yeah. Well, and even when I first started knitting, I thought I was doing it right and I wasn't. And then I oh. watched another video and I was like, Oh, okay. I mean, I was, yeah, it wasn't right. It didn't look right, but I thought it was. I just thought I was bad. <laughs> I'm glad I tried again. Um, let me see. Uh, would you rather have an endless supply of yarn or never have to weave in your ends again? Yarn. Definitely yarn. Because... If I run out of yarn, it doesn't matter if I don't have ends to weave in. Yeah. If you could have it, like, automatically just show up in your yarn room, too, like, you take one out, it goes away, and a new one comes in its place, that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. And you go, I think I need that in this color, and it just beep. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that. Looks like a, uh, people are agreeing with us, and they're saying yarn as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, be on, stuck on a desert, oh my goodness, help if I could speak, be stuck on a deserted island without your hook or without your yarn? Without my yarn. Because I think I could manage to make a hook. Yeah. With some. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, so I, I got to try and find, you know, soft twigs to crochet with, uh, crochet and twist and yeah, that's not going to be fun. <laughs> See, and, and Ginger from Yarn Geek is here, and I asked her that question um, to, a couple of weeks ago, and she's saying it again. She'd rather be without her yarn because she taught us in that video how to make yarn from, like, stuff that she has around the house. Okay. But if you're on a deserted island, you wouldn't have plastic bags. What would you make yarn with? Um, palm trees or palm leaves, maybe? I think it'd be easier to make a hook. <laughs> oh, Ginger says she'd make it from grass. Might not be. Well, make loop yarn. Yeah? Yeah. Seaweed? Oh, I can't do seaweed. <laughs> Ginger's got a plan. I'm allergic to seaweed. So oh, I'd no. be afraid to do the seaweed. <laughs> um... Would you rather always use a color you hate or have to use a yarn fiber that you dislike? If You'll you, have to use it for some reason it's breaking up. Uh, okay, so if you had to only have one choice of one of these, would you rather have um, to always crochet with a color that you hate or always have to use a yarn fiber that you don't? But it could be in a color that you like. Hmm. 
I think I would have to go with a color I don't like just because like wool makes my hands itch really bad. And so if it's a fiber I don't like, I wouldn't be able to use it anyway. So I would have to say color because I could always find something to dye it. I can just go <laughs> pick some berries or, you know, dye it a different color. We're back on the island. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And we've got um, some people are saying that they would rather uh, have a yarn or color that they like. And Ginger's saying that she would also like, she wouldn't want to use a color she doesn't like. Oh, wait, she would. Gosh, I can't read tonight. <laughs> uh, so our next question is, would you rather have to weave in 200 ends on a project or sew in all of the limbs on an on 100 Amigurumi octopus product? product? So in the ends. I think because, yeah, I think attaching the amigurumi is still going to be about the same as weaving in the ends. And yeah. then you're still weaving in ends afterward. Yeah. Um, I've done the uh, octopus amigurumi limbs and oh my goodness, they can be really challenging. And I know that for some people, just they don't want to do the amigurumi if they have to sew on the limbs. Yeah. I've That's tried to be creative with them. On, yeah. Like, how can I do it with not making them separate? How can I make them attached to the project so I can just continue on and not weave in ends or not attach? Yeah, every, uh, other people are saying that they'd also take the ends because the amig uh, amigurumi limbs would drive them crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then if, are you a perfectionist? Like, if I am sewing them on and they're off by a little bit, I will take them off and redo them because I will notice that they're off by one stitch. Oh, yeah. No, it has to be like perfect. And so, like, my, I drive my husband crazy because I'm such an A type for that kind of stuff. And so, I'll have yeah. my, my doll all set up and I've got this big container of sewing pins. And so I'm constantly like pinning everything in, readjusting it, pinning everything in again, readjusting. And then I'll sew one of the limbs in, start and get like halfway through the other one. I'm like, oh, it moved and I didn't notice. And then I rip them both out <laughs> and do it all over. <laughs> yeah. My husband's like, you could have done three more dolls in this time. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> it needs That's to right. be right. <laughs> it needs to be right. Yes. Only once have I done it where I just I got really frustrated and I was when I first started and I made this cactus and uh, its limbs were slightly off. I'm like it's a style choice now because <laughs> I had tried. Right. It's, a cactus. it's supposed to be like that. They're like yeah, they don't always grow even. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you rather crochet with a cheap hook or cheap yarn? Cheap hook. Definitely. Have um, my favorite hooks are the clover, the gold clover ones, the soft touch. Um, I haven't tried the clover armor. I'm assuming that they're basically the same thing. But I <laughs> pencil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are they soft all over? Like, is the handle soft? Yep. Or is the handle hard? It's soft all over. It's uh, it's so, relatively soft, but it like, it's still firm. Um, okay. like there's no bending it or anything like that. Right. Yeah. And I think these are all hard, but only that one little spot soft. So I'd probably mm -hmm. like those too, but, um, yeah, I'm a pencil holder, so I have to use a thin one, but I can't stand the, like, I don't like these, but I'll use them if I have to. Yeah. I am just, I don't like the way they slide in the yarn. I feel like they catch. And yeah. so uh, they are not my favorite, but if it was between that or yarn, I would, I would choose that. Well, I think also sometimes when you get like a cheap hook, like when I first started, I had this hook in like the same color you just showed and it would catch on the yarn. It was driving me crazy. 
and I just like took a file and like I filed it down till it was like smooth because I think that there are some things that you can do to like kind of fix it. So I think I'd also choose a, a cheap hook because also, I mean, I think life's just too short to use yarn you don't like. <laughs> yarn. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I've started telling myself this year. I'm buying more hand dyed yarn because I'm like, life's short. Why use cheap yarn? Yeah. And especially once in a while, you deserve to pamper yourself with nice stuff too. Yeah, to like just splurge a little bit. And, and sometimes it's just nice to switch it up a bit and get something that, you know, you can't just go and pick up at Michael's or Walmart or wherever. And so we've yeah. got some more comments here. Uh, let me see. People are saying somebody said uh, cheap yarn. Yeah, I see somebody said cheap yarn, and then I thought I saw somebody else say, "Oh, and the a couple of cheap hooks." Yeah. And Ginger says, uh, "Gotta use the good yarn." <laughs> yes. And let me see. I think uh, I got rid of all my yarn I didn't like. Like I just decided one day that. It was taking up space on my shelf that I could put good yarn in. So I just gave it all away. <laughs> it's like, I don't want this stuff. Just take it. <laughs> We're making her change her mind. you got to have the good yarn. Yeah. Feels good against your skin. Well, yeah, it's like, uh, I, I got to make myself a shirt that says life's too short for scratchy yarn. Because it, like, yes. if you just get especially if you go from like a really nice yarn I on the weekend I had a really gorgeous um it's like a merino wool cotton blend it was so soft and I made myself a shrug out of it and then I went to like a hundred percent acrylic the next day and I was just like Ugh, I don't remember this being this scratchy before <laughs> yeah like, it's amazing. what's happening <laughs> Somebody put out a meme that said, if you get this, if you get the Christmas gift with the scratchy yarn, you're not on the top of my list. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it where it says, uh, if you, if your gift, uh, if you got the gift with the scratchy yarn, it means I don't like you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll throw yarn away. Yeah, I, I can't throw it away because I think somebody else can use it. So yeah. I'd rather gift it. I think I've given my mom a ton of yarn and my mom has more yarn than she could ever use. But I keep <laughs> giving it to her. <laughs> give it to her or give it to a friend. Um, it just, my hands get so sensitive that even, like there's a couple things I have to use Red Heart on. I've got a lady I make Christmas stockings for and they're like vintage style. I really need to write up the pattern. Her grandma used to make them for everybody in the family. And so now she has been asking me to do them. And, and she wants them to look just like her grandma's. Well, I have to use Red Heart yarn to match the color and then just the sturdiness of it. And I have made a, um, a stocking for her and then gotten rid of the yarn. And then she orders another stocking. Oh, no. I'm like, I don't know, on to the leftover, but then I had to go buy more. So I'm like, I've got to start keeping that and just finding a place to put it because mm -hmm. it's, just, it's so hard to work with. Like I can only do a few rows at a time and then I'll have to go work on something else. <laughs> um, somebody says that she would give it away to the library. To the library. Do they do like crafting at the library? I haven't ever thought about. I'll have to look into that. I know that um, I homeschooled for many years. And so our homeschool co-op does take some yarn and stuff for crafting and, and for art class and stuff. So I have donated there as well. But I'll have to see if our library does that. I'm not sure if they do. No, we're all good place to donate it is um, the schools. Like my son is in kindergarten. And last year they had like this um arts and crafts like um oh, I'll say fundraiser for lack of a better word but they were really desperate for tools for crafting and I was like hey look I've got a whole bunch of yarn and some other craft supplies do you want them so I gave them this big bag of yarn and they made um 
like sewing cards so they could learn the alphabet and they sewed like, the letters and different things and a bunch of stuff and so um and it surprised me the different things that uses they found for it so um if you're ever unsure like check with the the young schools because they use it so much apparently and so every time i i have a little bit of extra i'm like hey you guys need some more yarn i've got lots <laughs> yeah that's a great idea i have i've never thought about that so yeah i'll remember that for next time Sometimes I just gave it to my son to let him play. I put uh, all loaded up in my uh, knitting machine. I have a Centro knitting machine. And um, I have one yarn that I'm not like crazy about, but I have a bunch of, and it works great in the machine. So he makes himself like little hats and stuff in it and he gets to play with it. So sometimes it's just fun to give it to them and let them play with it. Yeah. Uh, I think the favorite thing we ever did with the kids when they were little with yarn I had them trace an animal on to like the um, a cereal box the cardboard of a cereal box mm -hmm. so they trace an animal and then they had to take the yarn and they traced it and then kept going around until the entire thing was filled and so you dip it in glue and you do that and I still oh. have those and I think okay. my daughter was probably in kindergarten and my son was in third grade when they did those so um yeah, that was a long time ago, and it was some really scratchy yarn, but they have these cute little things they made, and they're stored in the basement somewhere. <laughs> uh, Ginger's saying that she makes, she also makes cat toys with her yucky yarn. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I don't have a cat, but that is a good idea. Cats, cats would love all those little tails and stuff hanging off. Oh yeah, and it's just, it just shows that there's just so many different uses you can use for that, like even just your scraps, right? Because my kids are obsessed with my yarn scraps, like obsessed. And so I like I have a little pile after I weave in ends and they, they play with them and unfortunately makes a mess, but they have the time of their life with it, so whatever. That just proves that yarn is essential, right? Yeah, exactly. I need to have it for my kids. <laughs> Uh, let me see. What's our next question? Would you rather never use your favorite yarn or your favorite five yarns again, or only use your favorite five yarn for the rest of your life, but you can never use a new yarn again? Oh man. It's a tough one, right? I, I guess I would say never use my favorites because I just find new favorites. <laughs> There's gotta be something else out there that I would like. Because I can't imagine never using a new yarn. Because, right. yeah, I like I like to find new things. Yeah, I'm the same. I, I and Ginger saying I I have to get the new yarn because yeah. it like every time I see something new that is like like with the Trubu when I saw it, it on your feed I was just like oh, that looks so awesome. <laughs> and it's so, so shiny I, too. So pretty. Um, have you blocked it at all yet? I was I was wondering how it kept up with the blocking. No, I haven't gotten far enough. I, uh, but it's so lightweight. I'm only, I think I'm like 54 rows. Oh, okay. But it's like super shiny and super soft. I cannot wait to wear it. But yeah, 54 rows, I think I have to do a hundred and, 70 before I get to the sleeves it's slow going <laughs> it's very <laughs> slow going but I'll get there it's yeah ginger it's ginger 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 ginger. the truth it's so soft I'm just like I need to make something crocheted with it and see what I think because I think with the knitting it's just because I'm new and I'm still struggling with tension and so I think that's just harder with that and I feel like I have to wrap it extra times around my fingers and yeah, it's, it's just been a little challenging. But yeah, I think I, cause I'm, for, I mean, personally, I'm always looking for like a really cool summer yarn, um, mm -hmm. like a, a lighter garment, right? Because I've tried to make summer garments before. I like I'll either finish them or get them half done. I'm like, oh, this is going to be too heavy or it's going to be too hot. 
and I'm always looking for something that's to be cool against the skin and not going to be heavy to wear. Um, yeah, I think this will be perfect because it is the, super, it's just really light and, and it even feels cool to the touch. So right. I think it's going to be perfect. I think I need to order some other bright summery colors because I can see a lot of it um, in my future. How does it compare to, I haven't ever, I haven't tried that one yet. Um, I'm curious too. Is the Kabu, is it a cotton? Is it a cotton bamboo blend? Yes. You know? Yeah. And I'm trying to remember if this one is also cotton bamboo. Because <laughs> Joanne doesn't have Kabu anymore. This one is... No, it's just bamboo. 100% rayon from bamboo. So no cotton. So the cotton might be a little stiffer this one like does not hold shape very i mean it's just really really flimsy yeah i would imagine that the um, cotton bamboo blend would have more grip um yeah when i've i've done some swatching because i i fa actually found kobu here and i was very excited but i haven't found a project that i really love for it yet uh, but the swatches i've done with it um it splits quite a bit which it, it is what it is but I'm still like it's not a deal breaker for me um but I would imagine that the cotton would give more grip than the bamboo yeah I'm thinking probably so yeah uh, I think uh Amanda the lady who I'm testing this for I think she used the kabu for hers oh okay. so uh, and she said it was a little bit slick so I'm thinking if she thought that one was slick and it has cotton in it I'm curious what she would think of this one, but I'm find, definitely going to get some more. Do you find the true boo like splits at all? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But I maybe, feel like probably the natural fibers. Yeah. And I think also, um, it, when I'm putting my needle through a lot of times, I'll catch it and then it splits it and like half of it goes over and half stays on and then I have to go back and like put it back together and so yeah it's definitely not a very tight twist hmm. I find that with a lot of like the um, more natural fibers like the cottons and the bamboos like unless they're mercerized um like the mercerized cotton I, I mean, that's my experience anyways that they split a lot more um but you can't beat the cool factor in the summer. Right. right. Yeah. The, the cotton that I just worked with, it split really bad. The, um, the box, it was really, um, the, I, I just thought it was a really thin twist. It just wasn't very tight, but, um, did I lose you? No, nope, you're still there. Your picture is frozen. So I was afraid I'd lost you, but I can hear you. Um, but yeah, it's split really bad, probably more than any other cotton I've used, but maybe it's just the way that their cotton is. Yeah, it could just be the plot, the ply for that. Um, I've you used, are. um, Hobby Rainbow Cotton. Um, I haven't tried any of their yarn. The Hobby Rainbow is, is really fantastic. Like I designed, um, a cotton tote bag with it last year it was really nice to work with um it didn't say it was mercerized but it like i didn't really have any issues with it splitting or anything um it really like maybe <laughs> yeah does it how does it compare with the karen cotton cakes um i like it better but it's definitely got a different texture like when like actually speak of, i actually have a cotton cake here because it's working on a swatch um i find that when i'm working but with it pardon is is the karen a blend yeah it's an acrylic cotton blend um but it has you like you can see that there's a ply but it, it just to me seems like it's just been pressed like it doesn't split at all it's almost just like it's a roving with texture mm -hmm. that makes any sense um because i i don't actually I could put it if I tried. Um, yeah. That's that's where I think the biggest difference is. Um, you could separate the plies if you wanted to with the rainbow cotton. But um, 
I want to change the perfect. Karen then, because this one, this one I can definitely twist, but I can see kind of what you mean about it looks, it doesn't look like you can see the plies very easily, but when I twist it, I can get it to come apart. But this one's two years old, so it was back when they had the small ones. Hmm. So they might yeah. have improved it. Yeah, I just got this one today. <laughs> yeah. I need to get some of those big ones in solid colors. I don't have any solid colors. Mine are all the stripes. Uh, but I did are. some bags with them, and I really liked it. Yeah, um, I made a, a my very first garment design last year with this. Um, and I was just on the verge of, of releasing it, and then I, I chickened out at the last minute. <laughs> Because I thought it was too warm. <laughs> oh. You know, one thing I've learned is that when it's warm here, there's other places it's not warm, and they'll still buy the patterns. And mm -hmm. some people will buy it anyway because they want to make it for Christmas for somebody, and they need to start now to get it done. Yeah. So I've stopped worrying about seasons. If I have something, I'm like, oh, I've been holding on to this for a while. I just go ahead and put it out. Yeah. Uh, and um, Ginger says she just made a bag with the stripes um, Karen cotton cakes, too. Yeah, they, they make really pretty bags. Um, our next question is, what would you rather or where would you rather crochet in a room full of screaming kids or around or in a room full of people yelling out random number? <laughs> kids, definitely kids because I count in my head while I'm crocheting and I can count in my head and crochet and pay attention to TV and answer my husband's questions about what's going on on TV unless somebody says a number and then I'm done. So if some, if I'm in a room of people yelling numbers, I think I would have a really hard time doing anything unless it was just simple, straight stitches across. Yeah. Same. I would, I would have to choose the same. I, the, my husband likes to, um, if I'm counting or if he thinks I'm counting, because I've started counting in my head because he does this, he just, he'll look at me and be like, five, 82, 67, 31. And I'm like, Steve. And he's like, 16. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm going to start over again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll do that. My husband will ask me a question and I just kind of, you know, look at him out of the corner of my eye like, you know, I'm counting and I'll keep going and he'll ask again and I'll go, now I lost count and he'll start laughing. And it's <laughs> like. It's the worst when you're like counting a chain, right? And it, say it's like, um, I was doing a project the other day and the chain was like 280 something. And I'm like counting it just to double check that I did it all right. And then my kid, my son comes over and he's like, mom, 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 mom. I'm like, one second, one second. And mom, mom, mom. Like, it's over now. It's over. <laughs> to yeah. start over. That's the worst. I hate counting chain stitches. They're hard to count. And then when you lose count and you got to start over, it's frustrating. Especially when you're over the halfway mark. Yes. That's why, I like, um, especially if you can just get away with it and just do um, the foundation chain. Stitches? Yes. Stitches? I love yes. Like, then, oh, I'm one short. Oh, well, add one more. <laughs> right. Um, would you rather have easy projects but with constant deadlines or difficult projects with zero deadline? Probably difficult projects with zero deadlines. So that I can have multiple projects going at once. <laughs> and would you rather have more time to crochet or more money for yarn or hooks or whatever your crochet pleasure is? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. I think more time to crochet. I think because if I have to be on and I don't have the time to crochet, it wouldn't matter. Right. But that's a uh, tough one. Uh, Ginger's saying, Ugh, that's the worst. I have actually used stitch markers when making long chains. That's a smart that's idea. That's a good idea. Like every 25, okay, put a stitch marker. That's a great idea. I'm going to have to do that now. 
Or at least we're sitting there thinking, why haven't we thought of this before? Right. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Um, did anybody have any questions for Carol? Um, I have to ask, do you, is the whole room yarn or is, is it like a yarn wall? A lot of it. <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> okay, here, let's see. So the gray cubbies have my partial skeins that I've caked up. Mm -hmm. And then let's see if I can, let's see, it goes from the floor up almost to the ceiling. And then it goes all the way to the corner and those bins up there have yarn and it goes all the way to the floor. And then if I turn this way, I have yarn there and then I have yarn there and then I have yarn there and in the closet. <laughs> That's so awesome. kind of everywhere. <laughs> kind of everywhere. I try and keep it um, organized, but it's not always easy. And Thank you. Yourself. When I when I first got my office, that was the first thing I said is I want a yarn wall. Um, <laughs> I'm testing a knit top for Lovely by Lee. And it's called Flutter Me Fancy. So it's going to be like tank top style with fluttery sleeves. Oh, that's going to be pretty. Yes, I just hope it fits. That's the worst thing about um, crochet. I, I feel like I can try it on and make adjustments if I need to. But with knitting, I'm afraid I will drop a stitch. So if I put in a lifeline and take out the needles and try it on and then try and get my stitch, my needles back in. I'm like, it's too much work. I'm just going to continue. And if it doesn't fit, I'll have my daughter model it and then give it away. <laughs> but yeah, that's all that that's rough though. When you're, when you're knitting and you have to put the lifeline in and you're like, Oh, is this really going to save me on the way back? Like putting it back, you know, on the needles. I'm, I'm not, um, very sure of myself yet to do that <laughs> oh you've tested for her she is so sweet this is instagram really needs to give you more of a heads up about that hour timer does it just cut you off i guess so like I, the i've had it happen one time before um with claire from um eclair makery but um another time i was on with somebody and it gave us a warning like like three minutes before um, so I'm not sure why it doesn't work sometimes and sometimes it does. <laughs> yeah. She does make beautiful yarn. I, um, posted on my grid today, some of her yarn that I'm getting ready to use. Um, I can't use wool yarn. I'm allergic to it. I can do some work with it. Like I can make stuff, but I can't wear it. And so I have to gift it, but she did some cotton yarn and I have one project going that I'm designing with some of her cotton. And then I have one that I'm getting ready to hank up and start pretty soon. The yarn was so pretty. I'm obsessed with like anything oh. right now that has like rust tones in it. It was so pretty. It is so, it is so pretty. I was really sad that there was only one left when I got it, but I think I know what I'm going to do with it. And I might add a little bit of white in with it to make it go farther. So um, I got that and I got some mercerized cotton from her in a green. I think she called it mint mojito. And I love green. So I was like, I'm good with that. And then the other one that I got from her is, it's kind of one that she'd never done before. Um, so it's a mixture of colors. And it's got blacks and browns and pinks and blues. And so um, I kind of kept with simple stitches because it has so much color that the stitches got lost in the color. So, and I forgot to send you a picture today. I was going to send you a picture of what it looks like. <laughs> That's okay. You send it to me later. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what you're coming up with with that because um, the, the way you described it was really pretty. So I'm sure it's going to be gorgeous. Yeah, and the yarn itself is a sparkle, so it's got that silver sparkle through it. So, yeah, I think it'll be pretty. And being cotton, it'll be great for summer. Yes, definitely. 
I really love that cup you've got. <laughs> I Thanks. also have a cup of mine, but mine says best dad ever. <laughs> <laughs> so I have like probably five Tervis cups. And it's about all I use because if I use a regular um, glass, my daughter will end up pulling out the exact same style glass. And then we'll be like, well, whose cup's whose? So I've just started using these and then everybody knows which cup's mine. <laughs> Plus they're fun. Yeah. And nobody else uses them, so. Yeah, I've got, that's pretty much all I use is the Tervis mugs lately just because I don't want my kids to break them because <laughs> my cups are always on the table and they're running around and doing stuff. So, yeah. Sparkles well, are the best. I sorry, there's a bit of a delay. I feel like I keep interrupting you. I'm not being intentionally oh. rude. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you're, you're fine. I'm probably interrupting you. No, no. Uh, I was going to ask if anybody had any other questions for you. Sorry, I'm trying to do Trinity Stitch, <laughs> and I keep missing. That's a new one for me. I like it. It's a fun stitch. It is. I haven't done much with it before, but I'll show you my little. I've missed a stitch in oh. the middle, but but it looks so pretty in this yarn. Yes, um, it does. I just can't get it to match the gauge width. I, the rows I've got perfect. It's the it's the width I'm I've done. The, this is like my 10th swatch, I think, ninth or 10th today. <laughs> I'm wondering if the Karen cotton is a little bit thicker than the other cotton. So, uh, um, thinner, slightly thinner, because I looked, um, I looked it up and just slightly, like just super slightly, but I think it's because I crochet tightly. Oh, okay. Um, so, I'm just trying, I, I tried with my, uh, odyssey hooks earlier and then i have like the furls wooden hooks i tried that and then now i'm trying with the clover see i think i might have a winner this time all right <laughs> my, other, my other stitches are way too tiny <laughs> i used to crochet really tight and my hands would cramp and mm -hmm. i got to the point where i started crocheting a lot looser i i started holding my yarn differently and now i can crochet faster and looser and my hands don't cramp so I, I do have a pretty loose, pretty loose crochet stitch. So that might be. I've gotten better like over the years with practice, but the, um, because I like control, I, I, my yarn a certain, a special way in my left hand to have like constant tension, um, without the hand cramping. Cause the way that I, I, I always get hand cramping in my left hand when I hold it, like the way you're supposed to. Um, but. I, I'm so used to crocheting tighter because of the amigurumi, right? So then right. it's just like, I have to like remind myself, okay, like loosen it up on the left, you know, slow down a little bit and make sure it's looser. Yeah. So you yeah. hold it, you hold it with your, um, wrapped around your pinky? Yeah, I wrap it around my pinky and then I wrap it around my hands and it, um, I'll show you. So like this. So I wrap okay. it around my once. It depends if the smaller of the yarn, the t uh, I'll wrap it around twice around my pinky, and then um, that holds the tension. And then I don't oh. have, I, I don't know. I've always done it that way, and it just uh, I've stopped getting because I used to get hand cramps across the back of my hand from crocheting. And since I switched to that way, it's, I've not had any issues. Well, cool. So I used to wrap around my index finger, but I don't anymore. Now this is all I do. That's it. And then sometimes I will do that and wrap around the pinky um, and then just kind of pull this forward if I need to. But I used to do it this way and it would get so tight. I would have marks on my finger. And oh. so now I'm like, I just do it like super soft, super loose. And I hold my index finger up. Do you hold your index finger up and hold on with your middle finger? Or do you hold with your I hold index? My, my index. You hold with your index? Yep. I hold with my middle finger and hold my index finger up. And my mom was watching me the other day and she goes, I can't, 
crochet with my index finger up. She said, I have to hold with my index finger. And I'm like, then how do you hold your yarn? Wait, sorry, I do it like you. So I hold, I hold with my you hold with the uh, middle, and then I yeah. yeah tension with the index. Yeah, so she does. She holds it with her index, and holds it up with her middle finger. And I just thought it was interesting. She's the one who taught me to crochet, but I can't do that. And I thought there are so many different people who hold their yarn and their hooks so many different ways. It's it's interesting to me. Well, it definitely is. And um, when I uh, forget when it was, it was like a while ago. And I was having, starting to have like the cramping in my hands. And I watched, like I really love like Dora. I have like a couple of her books and she had done this live video. And um, I forget who she was chatting with, but she was chatting with somebody. And, and they said like, if you could give some advice to crocheters or to like newer crocheters, what would you say? And she said, develop a loose hand. Um, she said, because you're going to regret it later on. And the craft is just so much more enjoyable with a looser hand. She's like, it's so important. And so after that, I started really like practicing developing what she calls like a looser hand. And um, she said, just do what, what works best for you. It doesn't matter if you're doing it exactly like they say to do in the, in the books. As long as it works for you, do it. And so, you know, I think that's the best way you can do it is whatever works for you. <laughs> I think that's going to be my biggest challenge with knitting is learning how to hold it in a way that I can keep my attention. And it'll probably come with time, but it is so awkward right now. Like, I know that if a knitter saw me holding it, they'd be like, what in the world are you doing? But, um... I, I also, I hold it in my right hand. I know a lot of crocheters hold it in their left hand. I can't do it because I want to hook and it won't mm -hmm. hook. And so like, I, I have to, I have to hold it in my other hand and, and throw the yarn. But, um, I, I try and hold it the same as I do my crochet and like wrap it through my fingers, but it doesn't work very well. So I wrap it around my middle finger. So I have it around my middle finger and then over. And then I wrap it around all three, <laughs> I wrap it around like that, just to keep the tension. And I'm like, it is really hard. And probably if I had a different yarn, I wouldn't do it that much, but I feel like I'm tangled in my yarn. And so I'll go a few stitches and then I have to adjust and then go a few stitches and then I have to adjust. And it's a mess. <laughs> I won't get in public yet. People will look weird. They'd, they'd be like, what are you doing? But, but hey, it works for you though, right? Because I mean, you have that gorgeous coral top and you know, it can't be that bad if you're able to make such a beautiful top. Yeah, I just have to make sure I'm not going to hurt my hand, you know, trying to hold it. So that's my biggest thing. I'm like, okay, I've got to figure out how to hold the yarn. And I think I'll probably try a yarn that's not so slick next time. And, and then just practice. And so as somebody who's a, a crocheter and, and you're kind of relearning how to knit now, what kind of resources would you recommend to somebody who's wanting to, who's a crocheter and wants to knit? Um, definitely YouTube because that, I don't think I could have done it without YouTube. I'm not really sure how we survived before YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy how much you can learn on there. Um, but I had I had to watch a few different videos and some of them went too fast. And I was like, no, I had to find one that went really slow and showed me exactly where to put the needle. And I still even um, some of the some of the stitches that I used in the last talk that should be very simple. I still have to look them up because my brain can't comprehend it all yet because it's so opposite of what I'm used to um, with crochet and so I, I definitely would recommend YouTube and I think the bamboo needles have made a huge difference I've heard that they have a little more grip and so mm -hmm. they're easier to learn with and I think that's been a really nice thing for me to have those 
that the ones I ordered are uh, driftwood because I'd heard the same thing that you want if you're wanting to learn try with uh, wood wood needles because they have more grip. Um, yeah. And I was like, well, these ones are wood. They just happen to be really pretty. So I'm going to buy these ones. <laughs> yeah. Bamboo needles are your favorite? Yeah. I, I, I really splurged on mine. It's kind of funny, but it's like, I'm going to teach myself how to knit and I need some good knit, knitting needles. And I had a few pair of straight needles that had been gifted to me in a fiber share package. But I was like, but I want like all of them and somebody, I don't even remember who it was. Somebody had posted a picture on their Instagram of this interchangeable knitting set from, um, from Clover. And I can't even pronounce the name. It starts with a T and it was so pretty, but they're like a hundred dollars for this set. And I had a 50% off coupon at Joanne. And then I had a $40 gift card. So I got them for like $10. Nice. So I was like, oh, look, I got these knitting needles. Now I really need to learn how to knit. That's awesome. I'm, a, I'm, I always have to get a good deal. I paid a dollar 99 for an instant pot once. And I was just like, yes. <laughs> I would have bought it even if I didn't need it. <laughs> I'm, the same way. I'm like, it's awful. Somebody says, oh, I'm having a sale on my hand dyed yarn. And I'm like, I don't need any yarn, but it's on sale. So I better buy some. <laughs> I am a sucker I for a huh? Did that on the weekend. Somebody was having like a mystery sale and I'm like, oh, the exchange rate is so bad right now. I really don't need it. Oh no, there goes $80. <laughs> I was just like. And it was a mystery yarn? Yeah, it was like a, a mystery yarn bag. And um, I've, everything I've seen from her of like so far, I also bought an extra skein because I was just like, I really liked it. Right. I'm already paying shipping. So I did that oh, too. I ordered, um, the Hook Nook did a mystery box. And so oh, yeah. the first day she said, she said, okay, I'm going to do these mystery boxes for $25. And so I was like, I don't need anything, but yeah, I'm going to go buy a box. And then like after I bought it, then she said, okay, so now I'm going to do some bigger boxes that are going to have some other stuff in it. And I was like, no, I'm not buying another. <laughs> and the sad thing is I love what I got. Love it, love it, love it. But the yarn has wool in it. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, she has one yarn that doesn't have wool. And I was like, I wish I would have got that one, but I think I can make some Christmas gifts out of what I did get. So I'll just have to gift it. And yes, when Hobby Lobby has their sale, it's sad. <laughs> I bought like a shopping cart full, but I have been using it. So that's good. <laughs> we have uh, a, a Spinrite outlet here. So like Spinrite is the, the company that um, owns yarn, it's Yarn Inspirations and Red Heart Yarns now. Oh, really? have an outlet it's a couple hours away but it's um it's probably I think 45 minutes from where my family goes for the summer for their our cottage trip and they have like these big bins where um you can buy yarn at like I think it's like I don't know it's like 20 cents an ounce or something it's ridiculous and some of them have labels some of them have them and I don't have them. And we, my aunt and I kind of joke, we say that I have like um, this special talent when it comes to yarn because I can like look at a yarn and tell you what it is. It doesn't have to have a label. It'd be a big mess. I'm like, nope, that's Karen Cakes. Oh, that's Red Heart Saver, like Super Saver. And uh, so we go in there and I'm like, oh, that one, you need to get that one. That one is the... Um, was it the sugar bush? They have they sell the sugar bush yarn there too, and so I'm like, oh, that sugar bush name. I'll get some of that. Oh, that's the sugar bush uh, canoe. Pick up some of those, right? And I'm like, and they have this um, sale. I think it happens twice a year, and like people literally leave with garbage bags filled for like ten to twenty dollars. It's crazy. Um, and some of the my friends, pardon. We don't have anything that good. 
Oh, I have to drive several hours to get there. Like I'm talking like four hours to get there. Um, it be worth it. Yeah, you can. And and here, if you, they um, you can even just call them and place an order, um, and they sell it in bulk too, right? They have um, like if you like if they were doing a delivery to Michaels, for instance. And the mm -hmm. yarn is in like a, a bag of like six skeins or whatever. You can buy a bag like that from them for like ten dollars. Um, wow. And uh, one time I was there, they have I think they're called monster. I think they're called monster balls, but they're like a ball of yarn like this. I think they weigh two and a half pounds um, of yarn, and they're usually like fifteen dollars. It's crazy so if you ever need just like what, one kind of yarn yarn. Is what kind of yarn is that one the uh, monster ball burnett comfort yarn burnett home comfort i think oh wow I i've that. never tried that one i don't think we have that one available here i haven't seen yeah. it we have a lot of just uh like for the most part like if you go to the store outside obviously outside of the yarn inspirations outlet but um we have a lot of yarn inspirations yarns here because they're canadian and um so I I, we don't have, yeah we don't have a, a ton of like wine brand yarns but they're it's getting better we're getting a lot more but uh yarn inspiration stuff is as everywhere so you get a good selection that's cool flush pineapple says hi hello <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I think that that you guys get a lot of yarn that we don't get, and we get a lot of yarn that you don't get. So, because I see a lot of things that I've got a an, a tester that um, that lives in Ontario, and she she'll say, "Well, I have this yarn," and I'm like, "No, I have no idea." And then other times I'll say, oh, well, this is on sale at Michael's. And she's like, not at our Michael's. She's like, we have it, but it's not on sale. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, even like the different regions have their sales at the different times and whatever. But it's definitely like when we were chatting before, like cotton yarns here are very limited. Like it's super hard sometimes to just find a good cotton yarn for a garment. So you have to be willing to shop online and the shipping prices can be a little outrageous. Um, right. So like I've learned um, some, there's a, I think it's called Comfy Cotton or just called Comfy Worsted from um, We Crochet. That's been really, really good. Um, okay, I haven't but, tried that one yet. You have to go online to get a lot of these things because really, if I were to go out to a store right now and want to get a cotton yarn for a top, my options are Karen Cotton Cakes, um, the um, Burnett, what is it called? The, the one you use for dishcloth. Is it Handy yes. Crafter? Handy Crafter, yeah. Handy Crafter, uh, Premier um, has a, a size. Yeah, those are stiff. Those are not soft. Like you wouldn't want to use those for a garment. No, we've got the Premier and then the rest of them are going to be like stock yarn. Um, but that, that, that's pretty much it. You, everything else is either acrylic or you have to go to, um, like a local yarn store and hope that they have something there. Uh, there really aren't really any other options. So you have to go online and try and find them. And then for me, I'm very tactile, so I have to touch it. And it's really hard yeah. for me to buy something without being able to touch it. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Plush and Pineapple says that stinks because Hobby Lobby, I love this cotton, uh, is her favorite. And then uh, with like, Ashley uh, wants to go to Hobby Lobby so bad. I tell, I, I must tell Carol what, like at least once a week, I'm get, I'm, I'm coming down there as soon as this is over, this quarantine's over, I'm clearing out Hobby Lobby. <laughs> And when we went on vacation in, in November, I was going to go, I got this closed. <laughs> now, what state are you above? Are you above New York? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. So it might be a while before New York is safe, but how far from the border are you? Uh, probably about an hour to an hour and a half here. Okay. <laughs> uh, so people are I saying... 
sorry, we're just getting a lot of comments. Uh, someone says, I order a lot from Wheat Crochet because I'm in a small town and there's a craft store and there's not a lot of cotton. And then uh, Plush Pineapple says, yes, always have to touch the yarn. And uh, especially cotton, yes. For me, it has. I have to touch the cotton specifically because I want to see how bad it's going to split. Huge, huge thing for me. Um, yes. And then uh, Ginger says, Ice Yarns has some great cottons, but the sh uh, shipping is is pretty expensive. Uh, I, I think they're in Europe. Um, okay. They're in Europe, okay. probably pricier. And then uh, Plush Pineapple says, we should send you a Hobby Lobby care package. <laughs> so I've been trying to send her a Hobby Lobby care package, but it requires me to go to the post office and I'm not going to the post office right now. So if you want to contribute to Ashley's care package, contact me and I will put it together for her and we can get it over there. I'll, I'll have my husband take it to the post office. <laughs> it's like a fundraiser. It's like send yes. Ashley the hob Ashley hobby, yarn. hobby Lobby yarn. <laughs> It's, it's been, it, I didn't even realize that Hobby Lobby sold yarn until I came on Instagram. And then I saw all these gorgeous colors. And I was just like, every time I asked somebody, like, oh my gosh, where did you get that? They're like, oh, it's like Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. And I'm like, gosh. And then it became a joke that I'm getting my passport to go yarn <laughs> shopping. Like, if this is this is going to be the reason I renew my passport. And then I did. And then remember, I went to Florida in November. I got this close to Hobby Lobby, but then we couldn't get to the store. Um, oh, goodness. I know. I was like, come on. It's only like a 15 minute like, no, We are going to Hobby Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about dinner. We're going to Hobby Lobby. I was like, we were also really close to Joanne's. I was just like, okay, I, I, I hear Joanne sells yarn too. I'm going to have to go there. <laughs> but we just, we just couldn't make it. Uh, under the, the promise that we were going to go on March break this year because there's a Hobby Lobby and a Joann's probably about 35 minutes past the border here from like the New York border there. And um, then the the COVID thing happened right on March break. And so we're like, it's like my trip. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um. I, I like Joanne and I get some yarn there, but I don't buy a lot of yarn there. Like they have a lot of Red Heart yarn. They have um, a lot of wool um, yarn that I can't use. Like an entire row is wool. Um, they have a lot of Burnett Blanket yarn and Burnett Velvet yarn. So I'll go there for that because they've got more selection than anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, they used to have the Premier yarn, which I really liked, but they got rid of that. And now they have the um, Simple Stitch or I can't remember something. I haven't tried it yet, but yes, they are overpriced in my opinion. And a lot of times they'll have like 25% off. And even then I feel like it's high. So yeah. uh, <clears throat> Hobby Lobby does 30% off every other week on their yarn, which makes it reasonable like their prices went up a little over a year ago like a dollar a skein which mm. was like made it like five dollars a skein and I was just like you've got to be kidding that's a big jump in yarn when you yeah. you're making blankets that take 12 skeins of yarn your yeah. your price just increased 12 dollars which you then have to pass on to the customer um but I think they have a better selection for like what I can use um Michael's there's a so Hobby Lobby is about a half a mile from me now didn't used to be but now it is and then Michael's is like two miles from me and mm -hmm. they have like half the amount of yarn that the Michael's on the other side of town has and I'm like oh, wow. yeah I'll have I'll have people say well I got this at Michael's and I'm like my Michael's doesn't have that but the Michael's out there has like three more um, aisles than my Michaels does. And my Walmart has hardly anything. And they're like, oh, my Walmart has tons of yarn. And I'm like, what's the deal? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I'm like, whatever. I'll just stick with Hobby Lobby for now and order online when I need to. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah they're Michael and Walmart. 
Does your Walmart have a pretty good selection? Mm, not really. They have like a single aisle of yarn. Um, yeah. And ours it's pretty is, much. Ours no? isn't even a full aisle. It's like three quarters of one side of an aisle. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, ours is it's a, like both sides of the aisle, but it's um it's it's just red heart um they have the odd lion brand thing that you can't get like they have mandela yarn i will say right. that they have mandela yarn you can't get anywhere else but then um it's red heart a couple of burnout or yeah your inspirations yarns um and like that and they have this other yarn that's from quebec um that's new i'm not sure i don't remember what the brand is i'd seen it for the first time and that has like a faux fur yarn and um a velvet yarn but those are the only different kinds of yarns that they have um, oh. but the what if any duplication that they have from michael's tends to be a little bit cheaper so you can you know go there and pick up like the burnout blankets usually about three dollars for a skein there and i use that a lot so yeah i think last time i looked now i haven't been in a few months since i've been home um they had they have the mandala yarn they have the red heart yarn they've got their own brand of yarn i think it's called mainstay and then they have the hometown lion brand hometown yarn and then a couple of the burnett blanket yarns and that's it so it, they used to have a couple well they do have the peaches and cream the lilies peaches and cream cotton but i, I don't really care for that and then um they had a couple things with the Kabu, but I don't know if they even have that anymore. And I think the one on the other side of town, if I want to drive 20 minutes, she's like, oh, we've got Lion Brand Faux Fur, and we've got this, and we've got Velvet, and we've got, and I'm like, how is that even fair? Yeah, the Lion Brand Faux Fur is one of those yarns that I'm just like, I keep seeing everybody have, and I'm like, we don't have that here yet either. <laughs> See, I had to order mine from Lion Brand because I couldn't find it. And then they finally got it at Joanne, but only on the one on that side of town, not the Joanne out on my side of town. I had to go to the Joanne on that side of town to get the True Boo. I don't know. It's just strange. They're trying but, to keep me from buying more yarn. That's what it is. Yes, peaches and cream is rough. I, I, I used to use it to make dishcloths, and I still have some left but I would much rather use the Hobby Lobby. It's so much softer. Is the Hobby Lobby like 100% cotton? It is, and it's so soft, like super soft. Nice. <laughs> but does anybody have any other questions for Carol? I can hear my husband upstairs telling the kids to go to bed. I guess they're giving him a hard time. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you coming on and chatting with me tonight, Carol. Yeah, it was fun. I'm glad yeah. we could do this. Definitely. We should do it again sometime. Definitely. And thank you to everybody who's been watching and joining along with us. And Ginger, of course, for joining us again and chatting with us. <laughs> yeah, I don't um, always have free time in the evenings. Usually by the evening, my husband's like, let's go watch something on TV. And so tonight I told him, I've been telling him for a week. Like every other day, I'm reminding him, okay, I'm going to do this live on Tuesday night. I'm going to do this live on Tuesday night. And so this morning I said something to him and he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I've told you and told you and told you. And he's like, you have? <laughs> like, <laughs> Crazy. Like my husband, yarn talk in one ear, out the other. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. It wasn't, you know, you, you, you weren't saying anything that I cared about. So I wasn't really listening. <laughs> Thoughts are on, but no one's home. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I will let you go and we'll chat again soon. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great night. <laughs> night. <laughs>